Amen. In the cross. Thank God for the cross. Amen. Hey, let's take our Bibles tonight and go to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter number 17. I want to answer this question tonight, why fast and pray? Why fast and pray? And um, I'm praying that God will work in a mighty way, and uh, I see that our our uh, screens have stopped working, so we'll pray that those will start working again. But I'm thankful, so thankful for God's precious word and uh, asking that the Lord would meet with us in a special way. All right, we're up. Very good. Why fast and pray? Isn't prayer good enough? So why fast and pray? Uh, we're going to begin tonight with Matthew chapter 17 and and uh, I encourage you to keep a, keep a pen and something handy to write with because we'll be moving around and want to give you several other references. This is not a, a subject that is talked about often, but it is a subject that is clearly taught in the Word of God. There are some passages that maybe deal with some issues that are very, very uh, minuscule, and it seems that the Bible really doesn't say a whole lot about it. But that's not true when it comes to prayer, certainly, but also when it comes to God's people fasting and praying. And so uh, I'm thankful that we can see what God's Word has to say tonight, and especially as it relates to our coming revival meetings. I believe this is a, an important time to look at this subject matter. There was a little, uh, little boy, and uh, his, he was in, in uh, his Sunday school class, and his teacher asked him, she, he's, she said, now, Johnny, tell me the truth. Do you pray before your meals? And he looked at her, and he said, he said I don't have to. My mom's a good cook. <laughs> uh, well, listen, we serve a good God. Uh, but it's still important that we pray. And the Lord says there are certain things that not only should we learn to pray and be faithful to pray, but we should also fast and pray. I want to draw your attention, if I could, uh, to verse number 16. For sake of time, this is actually a passage of Scripture that we've covered in the Gospel of Luke fairly recently. Uh, here was a, a young boy that was possessed of a devil. The Lord, along with Peter, James, and John, are up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so uh, the father of the child possessed of the devil brings them to the other disciples. And, and they couldn't cast out the demon out of this young boy. And then notice the Lord's response in verse 17. Matthew 17, verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Does it sound like kind of a, a harsh rebuke that the Lord gave to these disciples? But he said, hey, listen, you, got, you should have been prepared for this. Notice verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the devil, that is after he rebuked his disciples, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, that if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The Lord seems to differentiate between there are certain types of, of, of answers to prayer that are only answered when it's accompanied, when our prayers are accompanied by fasting. But let's be honest, as a Christian, this is exactly, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that people are talking about. So what does the Bible say about fasting and prayer? Well, just a couple observations before we get into the meat of the message. And first of all, when you read in the Bible about fasting and praying, they often, they go together. Now, I realize that there are, uh, and, I've, and I've spoken with some of you who uh, have fasted and, and, and done it for, for health reasons, health purposes, and so uh, I'm, sir, I'm not a medical doctor, so 
uh, uh, you know, again, I think there, there, there are benefits, and, and uh, no doubt people have experienced beneficial results as a result of, of fasting. Uh, all of us know, in at least a little way, what it's like to fast. How many of you ever had breakfast before? That word comes from break fast. So you, you're breaking the fast that you took during the night. You didn't eat anything during the night. But then you had break fast, breakfast, and you broke the fast. So all of us understand a little bit about uh, fasting. But the Bible seems to link together fasting and praying. So when there's fasting, there's praying. Notice also that as you look throughout the Bible, we see that the great saints of the Word of God, that they fasted. Uh, Of course, Christ himself fasted. Uh, Moses, Joshua, Ezra, Nehemiah, Daniel, uh, the disciples of John the Baptist, Anna in the temple, the apostles, Paul, Barnabas. The Bible's filled with examples of individuals who fasted and prayed. I want you to turn with me to an interesting passage in Luke chapter 5. If you'll turn there very quickly with me, Luke chapter 5 and verse number 33. Luke 5 and verse 33. The Pharisees came, and they, they knew that John the Baptist and his disciples were fasting. But they questioned Jesus, why did not Jesus' disciples fast? And the Bible says in Luke 5, And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Well, I think we all understand Christ has been taken away. He's ascended back up into heaven. And the Bible said, Jesus himself says, then in those days they will fast. So the Bible, the Bible implies that, hey, if you're a follower of Christ and, and you're awaiting the Lord's return, that God's people, there will be times when we fast and pray. Uh, fasting, what is, it, what is it done? It's done in times of desperation, times where, where we come to our own weakness, where we acknowledge our inability, and we must have the Lord's intervention. Fasting is it's a display of our belief in God of prioritizing the Lord. The Bible indicates, again, in Matthew 17, that there are some victories that will only be won when God's people fast and pray. Now, with that being said, let's look at number one, the meaning of fasting and praying. What does it mean to fast? Well, prayer, it's been said by Andrew Murray, he said, prayer is reaching out after the unseen. Fasting is letting go of all that is seen and temporal. Fasting helps express, deepen, and confirm the resolution that we are ready to sacrifice anything, even ourselves, to attain what we seek for the kingdom of God. So uh, prayer is seeking after God, asking the Lord. Fasting is letting go of that which is temporal. Another preacher said, fasting is an outward evidence of our inner hunger to see God answer prayer. And so what is it? It's going without, most oftentimes going without food because something is of higher priority. We would rather go without the food, but we cannot go without God's intervention. That's what fasting is. And so what what does it mean? Fasting means that we're making the Lord our number one priority. That, hey, I'm going to say no to this. And as important as that is, this is even more important. Seeing revival in my home, seeing God work in the life of this individual is even more important. There's a greater hunger so that we can say no to the physical hunger and devote that time to prayer. So again, there are uh, benefits to to, uh, uh, physical fasting, but that's not necessarily the biblical fasting. It's always the going without so that I can devote my whole time and attention to praying. So in other words, it's not, well, I'm I'm fasting today, meaning I'm 
I'm not eating anything, but no, I'm not, I'm, I'm going without that so that I can devote my time and attention to praying. And every time the stomach growls, that's a reminder I need to seek the face of God. And so that's what, it's a greater hunger that we have, a greater desire. Now, all of us have, to some extent or another, we've, we've fasted before in, in a, I guess we could say, in more of a secular way. Uh, how many of you ever, um, maybe in your school days, you stayed up late and you went without sleep to study for that exam, right? You said no to, to one thing, you said no to sleep so that you could say yes to studying, right? That's going without. If you've ever, if you ever said, you know, hey, I, I, I've got too much going on at work. I, I can't take a lunch break. I'm going to go without the lunch because this project's got to be finished. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? And so you, you went without so you could make sure something that was of a higher priority was completed. In a secular way, that, that's fasting. In, a, in the Bible way, we're saying no to something, most oftentimes food, so we can say yes to the Lord and seek the Lord in prayer. And so fasting basically is this, it's saying no to that which is, uh, which is daily necessity or, or comfort. How many of you know food can be, there is such a thing as comfort food? How many of you know about that? Ice cream, yes. <laughs> and the list goes on and on of all the comfort foods. And so when we say no to that, we're saying, God, you're the greatest. You're, you're, you're the priority here. I'm going without this because I cannot go without you. Why do we not fast and pray? I believe, I believe the number one reason is because we're, just, we're not desperate enough. We're just not, it's, it's not that much of a priority. Oh, we, we want revival. We want the Lord to work. We, we desire to see so-and-so saved. We, we really would like, it'd be great if God answered that prayer, but we haven't come to a place in our life where we are desperate for the Lord to work. And I believe that's what fasting and praying is. Of course, uh, you remember in the Old Testament, Esther, who called a fast the Bible doesn't even use the word prayer in the book of Esther, but that's the implication. When she called the fast for three days before she was going to the king, the implication was, hey, everything else is secondary because God intervening in this situation is primary. It was of the utmost importance. And so fasting is also it's, it's going without the earthly pleasures. It's saying no to something that, that normally we like to say yes to and going without. Uh, fasting, is, it means we're praying with persistence. So when you fast, there's a set time that you set aside so that you can seek the Lord persistently in prayer. Um, fasting, I believe, also has the idea of, of purifying. It, it's It's... It's us, I'm saying no to pleasures, things that typically I would go to for comfort, I would go to for, for gratification, but I'm going without that because, because those things can't help me. Only God can intervene in this situation. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. While primarily in the Bible, fasting is going without food, but I do believe that, that you can also fast from other things. I, I think you can, you can fast from watching television, from watching movies. And by the way, that's a great idea. Because think of how much of our time, our attention is consumed on those things. And we say, well, I, I just don't have time to pray. That, that's a lie. Because we make time for movies, for watching TV, for, uh, uh, for social media. But, hey, what about from the I'm not going to do that. I recognize there might be some things as far as technology, you know, your, your job, responsibilities, things of that sort. But certainly, you know. I don't know of any job where you have to watch television or watch movies. But I, I don't think, especially when it comes to revival, there wouldn't be anything wrong at all with us saying, you know what, we want God to work in a greater way. And if it means us saying no to that 
so we can devote more time to praying, then let's do that. I think that's a wonderful thing. I would encourage you within your homes to set aside some time and say, hey, this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast and pray. Maybe it's going without food so that you can devote that time. Maybe it's going without the television or social media or some other, some other thing that is typically our go-to, our comfort that we say, you know, I'm not going to that thing. I'm going to the Lord. I'm going to ask God to intervene. That's fasting and that's praying. I believe fasting means believing in the power of God. Hebrews 11.6, if you'll flip over there in your Bibles with me, Hebrews 11.6 tells us this, that when we come to the Lord, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So not only must we believe that God is God, I think everyone in this room believes God is God, but do you believe that God will reward those who diligently seek him? And I believe fasting is one way that we're able to say both to ourselves and to the Lord, there is no greater thing that I need than for God's intervention. Number two, the motives for fasting and praying. Fasting is not for salvation. It's not for salvation. Well, if I don't fast, I'm going to lose my salvation. No, no, no. The Bible does not teach that. We don't fast so we can be saved, okay? This is, this is again, something that we do to, to, as we grow in our walk with the Lord. It is not for salvation. But then again, there are many things in Scripture that the Bible commands but have zero effect or contribute nothing to our salvation. Hey, the Bible commands us to be baptized. Oh, it doesn't make us more saved if, we're, if, we're, if we are baptized or less saved if we're not baptized, but it's simply obedience to the Lord. And so fasting is the same way. It's, it's simply obedience to the Lord. And so it's not for salvation. And then, and then secondly, it's not for show. So many times we can act as if because we fast, we are super, super spiritual. The fact is, fasting is not about everybody look at me and how spiritual I am. The, the, the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, you remember what he said? He said, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. He's, he's just so proud of all that he does. And he's just, he's laying out his credentials before the Lord. But the fact is, it's not for show. It's not to brag. It's not for anything like that. Hey, girls, let's not play right now. Thank you. All right. Fasting is all about seeking the Lord and what he desires. I want you to turn over to Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6 together. And here's the Lord gives some very specific and, and very simple instructions regarding fasting and prayer. He says, moreover, Matthew 6, verse 16, moreover, when ye fast. By the way, he doesn't say if you fast. He says when you fast. He said the same thing when you give tithe or when you give alms or when you pray in that same passage. So, again, the implication is that we as God's followers, that there will be times when we do fast. He says, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. In other words, this is, this is what they would do. They would come into church or the synagogue. And they would, oh, oh, oh boy, I am so hungry. Oh, oh, I've been fasting for three days, seeking the face of God. And, and everyone stands, ooh, wow, he's, wow, they, he's really serious about seeking God. And it was for show. God says, hey, don't do that. He says, when you fast, he says, he says, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, wash thy face. He says, hey, take a shower. Take care of yourselves. Don't, don't, don't uh, come in looking, looking like a vagabond and, and homeless person because oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm going without. I'm suffering for Jesus, all right? He says, hey, don't do that. Wash your face. Take care of yourself. Don't act as there's anything different. 
He says that thou may appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. God says, hey, you might not get the the applause and the recognition from people, but that's not the reason why we fast. The reason why we fast is that the Lord sees and the Lord rewards And that is the reward of fasting when God answers prayer. So our motives is not, well, I got to fast. I got to put myself through agonizing pain and and suffer for the Lord so I can be saved. No, it's not for salvation and it's not for show. Number three, what are the matters for fasting? What is it that we fast about? The Bible gives us several examples. Let me uh, give you six, six things that in the Bible where individuals in the scriptures, where they fasted and prayed. There were, number one, in times of trouble. Ezra, in fact, I want you to see the passage, Ezra chapter 8. Let's go there in our Bibles. Ezra chapter 8, and uh, look with me. Here is Ezra there. They're rebuilding the temple. Now, this is before the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt by Nehemiah. But they're rebuilding the temple and, and like Nehemiah, they're receiving threats, and boy, the enemies are trying to stop the work of God from going forward. And I want you to notice Nehemiah, or excuse me, Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Ezra said, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. So Ezra proclaims a fast. By the way, there's nothing wrong at all with a church together fasting. Again, we don't all come in here, oh, how's your fast going? Oh, oh boy, boy, this is so hard. This is so difficult. Oh, hey, we're, we're spiritual people. No, that's, that's not what happens. But there's nothing wrong with a church together fasting. In fact, I I would encourage you this week to set aside a date, a time, from from this time to this time. I'm going to go without these things. I'm not not going, I'm not watching television. I'm not getting distracted by this. I'm going to go without these meals so that I can devote this time to praying. And so whatever day or time, that's between you and the Lord. All of us have different schedules, different responsibilities. But I would encourage you, set aside a time and say, I'm not just going to go without, but I'm, I'm going without for the purpose of seeking the face of God. And for Ezra, it was in a time of great trouble. If, if you read down through verse uh, 22 of Ezra chapter 8, uh, though they had been given the blessing of the king of Persia to go back and rebuild the temple, Ezra had said, uh, and, well, let me just read verse 22. He said, For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of the Lord our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So Ezra said, Boy, we've just bragged on God and who God is. I don't want to go and ask the king for help. And so what did he do? He went and asked God for help. And notice verse 23, so we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. God heard their prayer. We fast in times of trouble. Uh, Secondly, we fast for clear direction, for clear direction. If you're in a a, a time where you're making decision, you need the the wisdom of God. You need need clarity. The, The Bible tells us the example of of Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13, that as they were fasting and praying, as they were ministering, that the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me uh, Saul and Barnabas for the work wherein I have called them. God gave clarity. God gave direction. Isn't it amazing how oftentimes we make a decision without consulting the Lord, without really truly praying like we ought to and learning to wait upon the Lord and oftentimes, very rarely, does a Christian ever fast about making decisions. But the truth is, when you fast and pray, God gives a clarity. 
He, if, in, in times when there is fasting, and I've heard this from others, and this is something I've experienced myself, when you say no to all, all, of the, all the things that so often consume our life, it's amazing how God gives clarity and focus to make God-honoring decisions when we fast and pray. And, and God gave that clarity and direction to Saul, who was Paul and Barnabas, in their decision-making process as well. So, hey, what are, what are the things we fast and pray about? Times of trouble, clear direction. Number three, repentance over sin. Again, for sake of time, you know the story of Jonah. Jonah reluctantly goes to Nineveh. And, and, and boy, he ran the other way at first. Finally, he goes back. And boy, Jonah, was he didn't, he, 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 he didn't like these people. And so he just laid it out. Hey, in 40 days, God's going to kill all of you. And uh, he, he, had, he had zero compassion on the Ninevites. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. If you remember uh, in the life of Hezekiah, it was Sennacherib. Boy, what a, a ruthless tyrant. Wanted to wipe God's people off the map. Nineveh was the capital. These were ruthless, wicked people. And Jonah, he was just fed up with them. And finally, he goes to Nineveh, and then he gives the, the message. And then what does he do? He goes, sits up on the hill, and waits for God to destroy them all, right? But what happened? They repented. God spared the city of Nineveh and extended their life another 120 years because they repented. And when they did, the Bible says in in the book of, of, of Jonah, that, that, they, uh, that they repented and they declared a fast. They said, hey, let's seek the face of God. Here were these wicked, vile people. But what did they do? They exercised repentance over their sin. Uh, number, number four, a power to minister. Again, Acts chapter 9, we see the, the apostle Paul, or at this time his name was Saul. Saul had been stopped literally dead in his tracks by the Lord Jesus himself on the road to Damascus. And it was there in Acts chapter 9 where the Apostle Paul recognizes that the Lord indeed, Jesus Christ, is the one that he was persecuting. And so uh, what did Paul do? Paul fasted. Verse number 9 says, And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Verse 11 tells us at the end of the verse, for behold, he prayeth. What was he doing? He was going without the food so that he could devote himself to prayer. And so Paul recognized, hey, God had a mission for him to fulfill. The Lord had told Ananias there that Saul was a chosen vessel. And listen, if we desire power within our service to the Lord. That's a, another example Scripture gives of why we would fast and pray. I've asked the Lord, I, in fact, I ask the Lord, I try to ask the Lord every day of my life, but definitely every week, Lord, I don't want to be a powerless preacher. I don't want to just stand up here and give a lecture because there is zero power in that. Zero power. The fact is, I, I am powerless to do anything in your life. I can give the truth, but it's got to be the Holy Spirit that applies that truth to your heart. It, it, listen, I, I, love, I love Brother Rossi. I love to listen to him preach, but listen, he is powerless to change anybody. And that's true of any preacher. In fact, if a preacher says he's got the power and it's all him and he, you know, God could just step aside, that's a dangerous thing. That's not good preacher. In fact, I remember hearing one individual arrogantly say, you know what? He said, even if there was no Holy Spirit, I could have a successful ministry. Those are dangerous words. That's basically saying, God strike me with lightning right now. Because the fact is, ministry is not something that we can do in our own power. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. And so when we fast for God's blessing and power upon ministry, that's another example that's given. Two more and we're done. Num number five, when you're in need of physical healing. We see this example here uh, given in the life of King David, 2 Samuel 12, verse 15 through 17. 
Uh, this is, of course, the time when David sinned against the Lord, had an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, one of David's mighty men, one of his most loyal men. And David sinned against Uriah, and he sinned against God. But, of course, the Lord allowed the baby that Bathsheba was, uh, uh, gave birth to to be very sick. The Bible says in verse 16, David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Of course, we know that the Lord did end up taking the life of the child. And so, does it mean just because we fast and pray that God, that He always answers just how we want Him to answer? The answer is no. But I don't believe that David fasting and praying that it was a waste. Again, uh, these times for physical healing, sometimes God chooses to heal in His own way. As I mentioned this morning, I truly believe, based upon scriptures, this one in particular, that when a child, a baby dies, that baby goes into the presence of God. Later in the passage, David says, or they asked him, why, why, are, you, why are you no longer grieved? Why are, why are now you eating after the child has died? He said, he said the child's not going to come to me, but I shall go to him. In other words, God took the child. And so, and so God doesn't always answer our prayer just because we're fasting and praying and, and we can control and manipulate God. That's not how fasting and prayer works. Fasting is coming to God and surrender. Lord, your will be done. Finally, fasting is something that, again, we see back in Matthew 17, when there needs to be victory over strongholds. Listen, there are some things in life that are, we can't do it. Even if we, if we try really hard and pray really hard, what did Jesus say again? He said, this kind cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. There's a certain kind, a certain level, a certain intensity of spiritual warfare that will not be uh, conquered and overcome unless we as God's people are praying and fasting. You know, the truth is, Satan hates when the work of God goes forward. He hates it. Now, to the world, it might not seem like a whole lot's going on here. And, you know, people driving by, they see our, our revival banner out front and you know, they just keep cruising on by as if nothing's going on. But I can promise you, behind the scenes, there's spiritual warfare. It, every one of the, the, the guests and visitors that we've had over the past several weeks, I can promise you, there is spiritual warfare that's going on in their life. There's spiritual warfare going on in your life. And, and listen, none of us remain the same. Satan's wanting to take ground. God's encouraging to, to, to go forward, to press toward the mark. And you can be absolutely sure there is, there is spiritual strongholds that God wants to overcome, but it only happens when God's people pray and fast. As we close, I want to leave you with this quote, and it's a quote from R.A. Torrey that I've read again and again. It's powerful. It says this, we're too busy to pray, and so we're too busy to have power. We have a great deal of activity but we accomplish little. Many services, but few conversions. Much machinery, but few results. The fact is, you and I can go through the motions of Christianity. We can go through the mechanics of doing all the right things. But when we come to fasting and praying, this is where the rubber meets the road. It, it's, you know, we can impress one another and look spiritual and play the part. But when you meet with God, that's who you are. There's no cover-up. There's no, there's no spotlight. There's no applause for that. That's who we are. And listen, there are th we, can, we can put things on social media and, and praise God. We, we need to encourage one another that way. But the fact is, we can do all those externals and yet not have the power of God upon our life because something is missing. We're not seeking God. We're not hungry enough for God to intervene in our life. So I ask you this, why fast and pray? It's because we're so hungry for God to work that we're willing even food to go without. Hey, tell of it, who cares when there's something of greater importance? I've had people throughout the years tell me, 
you know, I would, I'd come to the evening service, but, you know, my favorite television show comes on at that time. It's amazing the things that we can allow to just creep into our life and just crowd the Lord out. When, we, when it comes to fasting and praying, it allows us to, to spiritually detox, to spiritually purge out those things so that we can focus on one and only thing, and that is the Lord and God intervening. I wonder how desperate are we for God to bring revival in our home? How much do we really want to see God work in the life of that individual and, and break down that stronghold? I believe that there are certain kinds of prayers that are only answered, as the Lord said, by prayer and fasting. I'd like you to bow in prayer with me, if you would. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed. I want to ask you this. How hungry are you for the Lord to work? Is there someone specific, maybe a family member, maybe a certain stronghold, maybe in your own life, maybe in the life of someone you love, maybe someone that's lost, they need the Lord? Well, you can be absolutely sure that there is some spiritual warfare, intense spiritual warfare that is going on. And I want to ask you this, in the quietness of, of this moment, would you make a decision here tonight of a specific time that this week that you're going to choose to, to fast, to go without, because you can't go any longer without the Lord answering prayer? without God intervening in that person's life. Maybe there's a decision of a direction that you need. You need God's clarity, His direction. Let's seek the Lord. Seek the Lord like never before. What time this week would you fast and pray for revival? For revival in your own heart. For revival in your family. Would you fast and pray and, and just lift up Brother Rossi in prayer? Lift up this church in prayer? I believe revival is not something that God dangles on a carrot before us. But it's simply something that the Lord wants to know. How, how, how hungry are we to see God work? What is that day? What is that time? This week, it's you and God. You and God. No other distractions. No phone, no TV, none of that. This is you and God together. Would you set that time, solidify it in your heart? And then as Brother Donnie plays, I'd like us to do what we've done the past several Sunday nights. Find someone to pray with. And let's pray together for revival. I hope you've been praying fervently each day, but there's something about when God's people pray together. At this time, let's go ahead and find someone that we can pray with. All right? Make sure no one prays alone. Everybody can pray with somebody. There's power when God's people pray together. And so let's find someone to pray with. And then after a few moments, I'll come back and lead us in a, a closing word of prayer together. Thank God we can go to the Lord in prayer together.
Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful power of prayer. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, even if there's just a, just a few folks here tonight that would grab a hold of these truths and would just prioritize having that special meeting time with you, God, I, I believe you can do things that, that we could only imagine, do more than we could imagine. Lord, I, I, I know that you are the God who said to the Ephesian church, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. And so, God, may, this, may we be on the threshold of seeing God answer prayer, prayer after prayer, request after request, as we as your people learn and grow in our prayer. I pray, Lord, this week that you would meet with us. Lord, as we take some time to fast and to pray, Lord, may we, may we have a hunger to see you work like never before. I pray, Lord, you purge all the, 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 the things that are so, um, so clutter our life. And Lord, remove all those things so that we may focus completely upon you. Lord, may you do the impossible in the days ahead. We look forward with great anticipation. Lord, may we come to each meeting with hungry hearts. We thank you, Lord, for this church. May we continue to grow in our walk with you and to value that secret place with the Lord. We thank you for this wonderful word that your word instructs us regarding fasting and praying. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given us. May your blessing be upon this church as we lift up the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Thank God for His precious word. And